there are some who say that there is a 25% uh, liquidity rule mm -hmm. as part of inclusion yes. in the premium market. And, you know, I've read some of these comments. There isn't a 25% governance rule that mandates a minimum, as I mentioned, of 25% liquidity. There's a liquidity test. And in the past, there has been instances of companies which were extremely large that obviously would provide very substantial liquidity. They were allowed to list mm -hmm. on the premium market with less than 25%. In fact, this happens in the United States all the time as well. So let's not confuse governance yeah. in the case of the 25% test, uh, in the case of the 25% uh, threshold, and liquidity test, which is ensuring if there's less than 25% that is put on the market, that there is enough liquidity to ensure you know, smooth trading of the underlying security. Got it. But what's your reaction then to recent press reports that Saudi Aramco is considering shelving the international part of the IPO? Is this to do with London becoming less attractive in any way? That I could not comment. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I couldn't <laughs> comment on, uh, on, again, either individual clients or, or putative clients. But in general, do you think London's becoming less attractive now with Brexit looming? Well, if you look at this market. year's numbers, actually, our business is up substantially. The number of IPOs, the funds raised, and not just in terms of IPOs for UK companies, but international companies. We now have 100 RMB denominated bonds quoted in our markets. Mm -hmm. We've raised over 40 billion pounds of capital year to date for companies, by the way, not just in the UK, as I mentioned, from around the world. I think if you look at any of the indicators in our listed markets, uh, whether it's LSC, PLC, by the way, the same applies to our partners and, and colleagues at Borsa Italiana. Yeah. The amount, depth, and liquidity, and range of IPOs is on the increase, in fact, quite sharply. But also green debt, infrastructure debt, foreign currency, masala bonds, mm. Chinese insurance. We've had 16 uh, US listings this year so far between the main market and AIM. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's quite the opposite. Numbers yeah. tell us that activities actually sustain. Um, I can't give you any more uh, details yeah, given sure. that we're publishing tomorrow our third uh, quarter uh, <laughs> IMS, but the public uh, data that we've already released shows that in fact we've been quite successful this year in helping many more companies and governments raise, raise more capital yeah. uh, on, on our market, certainly than the last couple of years. Okay, interesting. Now, LSE's lo second largest shareholder is Qatar's Sovereign Wealth Fund. Given the recent rift between the Saudis and Qatar, I wanted to ask how you see that impacting your chances of winning the Saudi Aramco listing in London. You've already said you can't comment on Saudi Aramco, but how vulnerable That's true. Are, but, but how <laughs> vulnerable are listings in London from general geopolitical rifts in a general sense? Well, I wouldn't talk specifically again uh, about uh, any putative customers, although if you will allow me, uh, this humble correction is actually the Qataris are our number one shareholders, not, not our second largest All right. customer. And I, I think they've been a happy shareholder. Our, our share price and the, the progress of our company in the last so only eight, nine years has moved convincingly to uh, you know, sort of top tier of our, of our industry mm -hmm. on, on a global basis. So we think ultimately decisions about capital raising, decisions about investment are linked to one thing, performance. Mm. If you perform for your clients, if you deliver the liquidity they need, if you deliver the service, type of products they need, if you innovate. The LSE has been a fountain of innovation in the last eight, nine years.